Hey, New Hope. This is Pastor Tommy, and welcome to our Monday Thursday devotional. And basically what we're doing tonight, obviously, is different, just like everything else we've been doing is different. And we're going to be celebrating, if you will, Monday Thursday. Monday Thursday, if you've ever been around our church, you'll know um, that it's among my favorite services of the year. And the reason it is among my favorite services is because it's it's different, right? It's a communion service and there's no benediction and it's just really bizarre in some ways. And it's, it's a service that in some ways is meant to actually bring you down. And we tend to want to always be lifted up. And so where, do, where does the word Monday even come from? Well, basically we think it comes from the Latin mandatum, which means mandate. And then that goes back to John chapter 13, where Jesus took his disciples to an upper room. And as they were getting ready to celebrate the Passover, remember he wrapped a towel around his waist and after he wrapped a towel around his waist, uh, he started to wash his disciples' feet. And by the time he was finished washing their feet, a few other things happened. And at the end, as they walked to the Garden of Gethsemane, he told them a new commandment. I've given you a new mandate. And that mandate was to love one another as I have loved you. And so we celebrate that. And we come today, Maundy Thursday is the Thursday before Good Friday. It's the Thursday where they celebrate the Last Supper, and then Jesus goes to the Garden of Gethsemane, where he will be arrested. And the most interesting part of the Maundy Thursday service, to me at least, and what I think makes it my favorite, is the way that it ends. If you remember, we celebrate the Lord's Supper, and after we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we then sing a final hymn, and as that final hymn is being sung, we strip the church. And what we do, by, by what we mean by that, is basically, any decorations in the church are taken down, but really what it means is people leave the church in silence. If you remember, the church gets dark and it's silent. And while that's all happening, I stand up at the front of the church utterly alone and begin to read Psalm 22. And I read the whole Psalm and it's a pretty long Psalm and it does feel pretty lonely. And it goes from, from this Psalm that's about bitterness and weeping and suffering that ultimately it ends in victory. And the irony of the whole psalm is th in the whole service is that no one is there to hear about the victory, that everyone leaves and they're down and they can't believe this. What the reality is, is the psalm goes from bitterness and weeping to victory. Remember, that's the psalm that Jesus prayed on the cross when he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That was Psalm 22. So what I thought I would do tonight, just by way of devotion, is I'm going to read Psalm 22, just like I would do it in a Maundy Thursday service. And as I read it, I'd like you to maybe close your eyes or pause this and, and dim the lights in your house. And this time, obviously you're not gonna leave, but listen to the Psalm, feel the Psalm as I read it and feel the Psalm as it moves from bitterness and suffering ultimately to victory. You see, this Psalm contains a sort of spoiler alert for Easter because we know that on Easter, Jesus wins. So after I re read this psalm as well, remember there's no benediction. So I'm going to read the psalm and then just say peace out and we will be done. So here's Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cried by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me, they make mouths at me, they wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breasts. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. <sighs> Many bulls of Bashan encompass me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws, for you lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count 
all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, be my help. Come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. And he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard him when he cried to him. For from you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nation shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. As all the prosperous of the earth eat and worship before him shall bow down all who go down to the dust, even the one who should, could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord for the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn that he has done it. Amen.